Hi, uh, welcome back to Frampton Forge YouTube. What I'm going to do today is I've got a new anvil. Someone's painted it, so we've got to clean it up to start off with. Great thing to do. Um, but I'm going to set the anvil in a stand and I'm going to show you an easy way to do it. Now, the first thing is when you look at the anvil, look at this. It's a sure way to get death. But if you look at my anvil over here, listen to this. But the trouble is, once you put your anvil on your log, if you never want to move it, pull it around. Now I'm going to show you a really easy, natty way of doing it. I move my anvils around. I never understand if you've only one anvil and it's in your workshop forever in that position, fine. But why spend your life dragging a massive anvil around? Why spend your life getting a ringing in your ears that you're here forever? So in this video, I'm going to show you, and it hopefully helps everyone, a real natty thing what I do with all my anvils. We teach a lot of classes in here and we move them about. This is a great way of doing it. Well, I've got a cast iron base stand. Normally they've got a hole in the middle. If you look in here, look, there's a hole in the middle. Now what I've done is I've resined a bit of tin in there. So when you look at the anvil, lovely anvil, all days and onions. There's a bit of plate in there, look. Now I've cut some angle iron, which I'm gonna drill. So I'll drill that in a minute, I'll take all the burrs off and I'm going to put my anvil on the top of the stand, I'm going to set it all in so it's easy to move around and it's mobile, we'll show you a little stage at a time. Now I always take burrs off of things just for everyone else's safety as well as my own. Even if it's going in concrete, I hate anything sharp because you forget about it and you'll bash into it and then it really hurts. I'll go and mark it to drill it. There's some nice little heavy duty wheels I got off eBay. Now, you wanna make sure they're strong wheel. Don't get the, it's a cast iron wheel. Don't get a really lightweight wheel, it's gotta hold a lot of weight. And what I don't need the caster, I just want the wheels. So I'll take them apart, they've got bearings in them. These are very expensive to buy new, but if you look on, on eBay, you can often pick them up. I use these a lot of the time. They've got a nice little shaft through the middle. They've got a grease nipple on the side. Any heavy duty caster will do. I don't need that bit.
do what I'm going to do with these, you know. Induction wrapping. Right, now we'll go over to our super induction heater. I've drilled some angle iron. Drill some flat bar and I marked a little line on it. If you're coming over, look, I'll show you what I'm going to do with this. Slot with a grinder so I can see it when it's red hot. It's just a little mark, you can dot punch it, whatever's easiest. I can see the little slot easier than the dot punch. Line it up with a voice. Put a little slot in or a dot punch, always bend it towards the little mark, or if you bend it the other way, you'll start breaking the steel in half. The only reason I've put that slot in there is because when you put a it's not a big dot punch, you can't see it when it's bright.
anyway, it's a sneaky trick here. I've been a Cody welder for years, so we didn't like grinding. We weren't allowed to grind. This saved you a lot of grinding. Also, my dark amount isn't the right length, but it is on diamond. Space of 33 millimeters, and that's a 25 mil square. If I tip it up on diamond, it gives you a natural weld prep, so you can just weld into the corner. It saves you a load of grinding, and it's much easier. Then I put my wheels on. It's a natty way of doing it; makes it quicker. Grease nipples on the outside. That's better. I just weld a bit on the nut, on the bolt, and I ain't got to worry about it coming undone, and I, and I don't need two spanners. Two runners. 
So I'm gonna flip the base upside down. Now we come to the important bit to stop you going deaf. Did you see the roof lead? Put him in there. Give me a lift, please. There's your ring gone with a piece of lead. Don't put a magnet under there, that's another way of doing it. You'll end up hitting the amp when the magnet drops on your foot. So lead, now I'm gonna seal it in and I'll show you a real good way of locking this in. I like the forge, I'll get the forge going.
crypto or ring gone. Do not be led down to expand it, cork it in. Now we're going to lock it in. So it can't come out.
I just thought of a good blacksmithing term for welding, liquid rivets. There you have it, solid. You can move the anvil around. I'll just turn the welder off. So here you go, massive anvil. Whoa, blocking up your workshop fine if you've never got to move it. But if you put them on wheels and use big casters, I can move it around where I like. If you've got toe tectors on, you can do this. When you're forging, I never move. All we've got to do now is shine it up. Because somebody's painting it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it helps a few of it. I want to add a mount of anvil and move it around. Look, and now it's on solid. I can move it in and out of the truck. But uh, there is another advantage of using it and putting it on the rollers, which I'll show you now. And um, thank you once again. Come and have a look at this. And speed records. <laughs>